Hello there, I'm Black Wright, as you know, and I talk about various subjects. And today I'm, I'm not quite sure how to cover this subject because it's a bit sensitive on many levels. And I called it, um, Who is Our Saviour During the Crisis? You know, I've seen a lot of people sending around hymns and they're sending around prayers and they're asking people to send prayers around and they're asking, you know, they're saying, oh, God is covering us and stuff like that. And yet you get the feeling that everybody knows what's happening. And it's almost like they think something supernatural is going to happen that's going to kind of make it all evaporate, make everything go back to normal. It's most bizarre. It's like mo nearly from the regular guys to whoever it is, people suspect there's something not quite right that's going on. I don't think people can believe it can be something as calculating of what it is. I mean, they're talking about rolling out the vaccinations to people, to the Aboriginal Australians, to the people of Zimbabwe and the people of the UK. And I'm trying to think of why would, that's a kind of a very, very strange cross-section of people. I'm thinking, why would they choose the UK the Aborigines and people from Zimbabwe to test their human trials with the vaccination. And I can only think it's because they're compliant. The Brits are compliant. Aboriginals, they're compliant, more or less. And so are Zimbabweans. You try doing that with somebody from Nigeria or Ghana or America, you know, you're going to have an uproar. So who can they trial it on? The more people that are kind of, you know, who go along with the flow and who seem to be quite, um, com well, compliant, I have to say. I have to use that word. But it's weird. It's a weird kind of situation to be in because it's like... You know, but you don't know. You can sense something, but you're not quite sure what it is you're sensing. You know something's not quite right when you hear about the disparity, but you're not quite sure what it is. And then you're kind of, you kind of look at America's figures and you know there's something not quite right there. You're not sure what it is. You sense that the countries around, like um, Germany and a couple of others who are talking about getting back on their feet, and that's kind of makes us have a little hope that, yeah, they got back on their feet after three months. That's what's going to happen with us. When we know deep down that the way we're heading is on a road to no return. The, the way the country is heading with the lockdown and no, um, no kind of sense that it's going to get back to a semblance of order under the guise that the coronavirus is, isn't, it hasn't plateaued yet and they're trying to avoid a second um, flare-up. And so how do you think the country is going to get back together? How do you think that's going to happen? So what is going to happen? You know, they and the thing is, they tell us all the time. They're telling you straight out, we're not going to have any money to be paying government. We're not going to be having any money to pay for health care. We're not going to be having any money to pay for um, airports and seaports. What does that mean? No food coming in. So you're kind of, you're being, they're telling you up front 
And for some reason, it's almost like people are in denial. It's almost like they've reached a point it's a really quite bizarre. It's like a form of complacency where people are just sitting around and stuffing their faces because that is all they can find to do. And I was talking to somebody the other day and I said to them, you know, what are you doing? You know, like when you're on lockdown, are you studying? Oh. I'm not going to answer it, but yeah what are you going to do um oh i can't ignore it let's hope it stops in a minute yeah it stopped okay so what i was thinking is you know it's almost like people just cannot be bothered they've reached a point of lethargy they've reached a point of giving up there's no fire in their bones. There's no passion. There's no curiosity. There's no, there's nothing. It's almost like they have, they're just like walking dead. So do you think that by some miracle, you know, I mean, the majority of you have got common sense. Do you think by some miracle, God is going to come down and make everything right? while you sit there doing nothing. God helps those who help themselves. Things ain't working right to your satisfaction. That's for you to do something about and get out of this codependency situation you've allowed yourself to get into. Everybody is dependent on something or someone. And as long as you're in that mindset, you're screwed. So I don't, I don't even know what to say, to be honest, because I see it. I feel it. When you talk to people, I mean, I don't really talk to people. I talk on this um, platform here, but it's not like I talk to people that I know outside this platform. It's not like I try to influence any friends of mine or talk to them about what I talk to you about. But I can tell just from the body language, how they speak. It's just like they're just going to allow themselves to be taken over. And then when it's too late, they're going to say, oh, I didn't think it was real. Oh, I didn't know this was what was really happening. I didn't know that, you know, we're going to be in a situation where we don't have anything, where we don't have any food, where we don't have, where we're all going to be carted off somewhere, where we're all going to be separated from our families. I didn't know that was going to happen. I didn't know we were all going to be forced to have vaccinations and we're all going to be either die or we're going to be maimed or, you know, I didn't know that. You know, and maybe the vaccinations aren't going to kill you or maim you. But the fact of the matter is your livelihood is being taken away from you. And you're sitting around. Ah, oh, well, that's what they say. And, oh, that's the way it's got to be then. I, I don't know. I just think that, you know, it's almost like, it remind, everything that's happening now reminds me of the images we see of enslavement. When they show you all those slaves singing hymns, you know, and praying and, you know, that's what this reminds me of. When, when you, Every time I see a hymn passed around or something, I'm like, what do they think this is going to do? I mean, even if you read the Old Testament, it's full of conflict. There's nobody there that just sits around and waits for things to happen. So if you are a Christian, what are you basing your behaviour on? Where are you getting your lessons? What aspects of what you've read is, your, is giving you some kind of leadership?
I don't even know where I'm going with this. I mean, I just, I wrote down a few notes. It just came to me and I just thought, I really don't know what to say. And, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be the one to get up there and say, oh, you should do this and you should do that. And, oh, we're being victimised and, oh, this is all against black people and, oh, this is all about the elderly. And, I mean, I know I make comments on it because it's a part of what is happening. But I'm not about to try and get everybody, galvanise people and say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, people, you know, the people today, it's like, they're just waiting for somebody to give them a boot up the butt. It's almost like they cannot do anything themselves. And it's, they're, it's like they're looking for some kind of leader or some kind of saviour to come and say, come on, come on, we've got to do this. Come on, let's do that. That's what they're looking for. It's like they cannot find within themselves to be their own leader, to for them to lead and, you know, to galvanise something that would give them a little bit of strength, a little bit of oomph. So they're all just sitting around, lying around, or whatever it is they're doing, doing nothing. Absolutely nothing. And in a couple of months' time, they're going to say, oh, if only I'd known. So I don't care who sends me what. I am not here to tell people to get up of their butt and do something about their situation. That's not my job. It's not my job to say to you, don't pray or anything like that you do what you need to do you wherever, wherever you get your strength and your passion and your faith from that's what you need to do but all i'm saying is that god ain't going to come down and help you when you're just sitting around lounging around doing nothing and stuffing your bloody face with goodness knows what else and drinking to excess or smoking to excess whatever it is that you're doing to excess that's not the God that's going to come down and deliver you from all of this evil. That ain't happening. So if you think you're going to be sitting around and wait for God or Jesus to come and deliver you from what's going on in this world and give you a job and all of that, that isn't happening. Like I said, God helps those who help themselves. And if you do believe in God, you better start helping yourself. Otherwise, there's going, we're going to, you think we've got a tragedy on our hands now. It's going to be even a larger tragedy. And I don't even know what the answer is. I really do not know what the answer is. Sometimes I, I kind of say, you know, what can I speak on? How can I move things along? How can I, um, how can I, I don't even know. Um, I don't even know what the word is. Because you know what my spirit tells me? My spirit tells me that every single person knows the truth. Every single person knows the truth. Every single person knows what's happening. Or should I say they know their truth, whatever their truth is. And so it's on them. It's not on me. It's not my job to tell people what to do. So I think I'm just sharing here this evening, peeps. I mean, I didn't do a roundup. I didn't feel inclined to do a roundup. There was nothing that kind of jumped out at me today. But I did decide to talk to you about this um, just because. And that's all for now. Bye bye.